There's always been an ironic truth about social anxiety, a paradox that shouldn't even exist. It's the reason that you can't escape social anxiety, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you try to be confident, and no matter how hard you try to acknowledge it as a problem. But acknowledging it doesn't do anything. All you do by acknowledging your social anxiety is give it power. Soon it becomes your comforter when a social interaction goes astray, when you stand in a corner at a party, and when you are rejected in disgust by a person you admire. It's because of my social anxiety, you tell yourself. That's why she didn't like me, and that's why nothing ever goes as planned. But no, you're wrong. It's not because of your social anxiety. It's not because of your lack of confidence, or your awkward speech, or the heat of the moment. For all the confidence you think you lack, you are abundant in something else that confident people actually have a lot of. And that thing is ego. How can you lack so much confidence, yet think people care so much to notice you? This is why you're always anxious. You care too much about what other people think about you, and you think this way because you assume they care about you at all. That's the paradox, the ironic truth about this all. You think you lack confidence in social situations, but you don't notice how much pride you actually have. This pride is what leads you to care so much about what other people think and leads you to paralysis. You don't have social anxiety. What you have is a false sense that you are so special, the center of attention, that in every interaction you have, you are scrutinized to the highest order. Every tiny mess up, every drop of sweat on your head, you think is under the microscope from someone else. That's why it's so important to care about what other people think of you, you think. After all, your image is something that's important to you, surely then you're also at the top of everyone else's mind. That's why you can't afford to look silly in class, to take any risks, or to fumble your words in front of a girl. Or else, that girl is going to think of you every day for the rest of her life and laugh at that one time you fumbled a sentence for 5 seconds. Only the truth is, that girl will erase you from her entire life the moment she checked Instagram 2 minutes later. How silly does this make you feel? Here you are, using this 5 second interaction to validate your social anxiety. You remember this memory for years to come, and it negatively shapes who you become and how you think of yourself. Yet for someone else, your awkwardness lasts all of 5 seconds, and then they never think of it again. Doesn't that make you feel embarrassed, to worry so much about something that no one even cares about? To put this into perspective, think about some of the recent interactions that you've had and how much you can remember about them. Think about the last cashier who took your order at a restaurant. That interaction probably has no more meaning in your life. Now remember a childhood friend from long ago, you realize how even someone you once considered so close to you no longer has an effect on your day-to-day -day life. Even think of your own flesh and blood, an uncle you meet a couple times a year, and how even a member of your own family you now rarely spare a thought for. Through this simple exercise, you can realize that on the whole, you think very little about the people around you. Now realize that everyone is thinking this way about you. Every person thinks they are the main character of their own story, and they couldn't give a rat's ass about you. To everyone else on the planet, you are just a side character, barely worth the consideration. And this realization should make you absolutely happy. Because if it's true that no one cares about you, it means that you never have to care about what other people think of you because there's nothing to care about. The truth is, it gets even better than this. Because if you meet someone new and mess up, make a bad impression, that person will discard you from their life. By doing this, you are actually free from them in the lasting impacts of your social awkwardness. However, if you talk to someone and make a good impression, they might intentionally stick around and become a lasting part of your life. In this way, the sting of negative social interactions lasts for a moment but quickly disappears. But the benefits of a positive social interaction can lead to a lifetime of friendship. Every social opportunity you take has limited downside but tremendous upside. Isn't this something that's incredibly encouraging? For everyone out there struggling with social anxiety, I hope you find what you need to help you make peace and improve your interactions with people. In this case though, there's nothing wrong with the people around you, and everything that is preventing you from having a normal conversation is all in your head. The first step to beating social anxiety is to have the self-awareness to realize that you aren't so important. After you drop your ego, you'll find that it becomes much easier to stop caring about what other people think. So don't delay, because your new social life is waiting on you.